Coming up, a preview of the Atlantic 10 teams that have secured their spots in the March Madness Tournament. And later in the episode, I'll be talking about who's cutting down the nets this year in today's edition of The Ramble. I'm Natalie King. And I'm Lucas Kim. All this and so much more. Rambler Sports Locker begins now. Thank you for joining us for this special edition of Rambler Sports Locker. The men's and women's March Madness tournaments begin this week, and our reporters will be talking about some tips and tricks to get that perfect bracket. After the show, I'll be on my computer trying to form the perfect bracket this year. Natalie, are you ready for this year's tournaments? I'll also be working on my bracket after the show. It's going to be sad to not see Loyola in the tournament, but I'm really excited to see a few other A-10 teams in March Madness. Oh, very true. It's going to take a while to fill out my bracket this year. Speaking of brackets, here's Oliver Allen with a preview of this year's women's bracket. It's that time of the year again. With the final conference tournaments wrapping up this past weekend, the Women's March Madness bracket is set and ready to go. South Carolina comes into the tournament not just as favorites to win it all, but as favorites against the rest of the entire bracket. That's right. Sportsbooks have it that South Carolina is more likely to win the tournament than every other team combined. While this might seem shocking, the Gamecocks have not lost a game this season, sitting at 33-0. The strength of the Gamecocks comes not from just one star player, but an exceptionally well-rounded team, boasting the fourth best scoring offense despite having no players within the top 50 in points per game. After defeating the reigning champs in LSU to win the SEC tournament, it appears that anything less than a national championship would be a disappointment for South Carolina. However, do not count out the Iowa Hawkeyes, who are seen as the second favorites to win it all. The Hawkeyes squeaked out a 94-89 win in overtime against the Nebraska Cornhuskers to win the Big Ten tournament, led by a 34-point performance from Caitlin Clark. With Clark having set the all-time NCAA scoring record, the cherry on top of a legendary career would be a March Madness title. The stakes are high coming into the tournament, with South Carolina, Iowa, Texas, and Southern California entering their respective brackets as the one seeds. Whether legendary coach Don Staley leads the Gamecocks to their third national title since 2017, Caitlin Clark cements her legacy as the greatest of all time, or if this is the year an underdog takes it all, I can't wait for the women's tournament to begin. For Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Oliver Allen. Thank you, Oliver. This past weekend, RSL sent a team to Brooklyn for the Atlantic 10 tournament. Fans from all 15 A10 teams attended, and our crew was able to learn a bit about each fan base. Vanessa Hoxa has the story. It is officially here, the moment we have all been waiting for. The A-10 Men's Basketball Championship game is officially underway. The Duquesne Dukes versus the VCU Rams. Now, although Loyola is not in the championship game, the Rambler spirit is still alive at the Barclays Center. So today, I'm going around asking A-10 fans one very important question. Do you know what a Rambler is? You know, I, I should know this. Do you know what a Rambler is? No. No, what's a Rambler? <laughs> if you had a guess, what would be your one guess as to what a Loyola Rambler is? Like a goat of some type? I'm the goat. The goat? I'm the greatest of all time. Really? Yeah, undisputed. Undisputed? I mean, yeah. I know it's their, like, mascot, but I don't know what it is. Take, if you had to take your best guess, what would you guess? An animal? <laughs> What kind? Like a wolf. Okay, that's a good guess. Our mascot is a wolf, so that's a good guess. But that's not quite what a rambler is. A wolf of some sort? I'm gonna guess some sort of person, but I don't know. Like... A rambler. Maybe like a sailor. Something to do with like, I don't know. I guess Chicago is a port city. I'm gonna guess something to do with hunting, if a wolf's involved somehow. I don't know. I'm guessing it's a type of a bear, maybe? Okay. Okay, good guess. Not quite. Is it a person that like talks a lot? A gambler. <laughs> it sounds like somebody that talks about something that they don't they don't know enough about. <laughs> Fair. Uh, can you use it in a sentence? <laughs> the Loyola Ramblers are out of the semifinals. 
And that's really disappointing. You know, I really wanted to see them in the semifinals. I bought these tickets expecting to see Sister Jean in Loyola, Chicago. And now I'm here watching VCU and Duquesne with a Q. With the Q. It's, it's a really disappointing. You know, big A10 fan, lifelong A10 fan. Wanted to see Loyola, Chicago, but unfortunately, so is next year. OK, but do you know what a Rambler is? Oh, no. But I love the Ramblers. I can't tell you what it is. But I know what the mascot looks like. And I don't know. I don't know. I probably should know this. <laughs> also, I don't. I need to do a better job of making sure I know all of these things. I don't know what a rambler is. But, Can you tell us? But go ramblers. Go ramblers. Go ramblers. Yes. I absolutely. will tell you. Okay. So back in the earlier days, when we had a football team, we don't now. We didn't have a home stadium, so we would kind of ramble from place to place. We were initially called the Loyolans, but that didn't really stick. So everyone always said we would ramble around, so then we were eventually named the Ramblers. And we've been the Ramblers ever since. Wow. You learn something new every day. Had I hung out longer with Sister Jean, I think I would have learned a whole bunch of things. Fun fact, I love it. Yeah. The more you know. Y'all are the Ramblers. That's crazy. Love it, amazing. Got it. Interesting. Last question. Do you know who Sister Jean is? Oh yeah. Yeah? Of course. I've been following Sister Jean for a very long time. No, not really. Yeah, she followed the team the whole time. They almost made it to the championship. Are you familiar with Sister Jean? No. Yes. Yes. Do you know how old she is? 103. 103? 101. I was going to say 98. 90, I think, she, I think they said 95, 96. 92? She's got to be pushing 95. She looks great for her age, by the way. 94. 104! And been driving! And she looks amazing! Close. 104. Uh. 104? 104. I was just 10 off. Just 10. Just 10 years. Just a whole decade. A whole, yep, a whole decade. Oh wow. God. All right, I knew she was over 100. That's I didn't awesome. know exactly which one. That's impressive. She's 104. Good for her. I just got to drop. She's got to drop. She's got to drop the skincare routine. I love it. Shout out to Sir Jean. Absolutely. Shout out to Jean. She's 104. Wow. Now she's 104. She was just here when Loyola played in the first. Was she? Oh wow. Still in the wheelchair coming yeah. to the games? Yep. Wow, that's interesting. Shout out, Sister Jean. Shout out. God bless her. <laughs> I'm, I'm only 60 and I almost didn't make it. <laughs> well, although these are not maroon and gold, and no one really knew what a Rambler is, fans definitely left tonight knowing what it was, including A10's reporter, Paige Messier, in Brooklyn, New York. I'm Vanessa Hoxa. <laughs> After two exciting weeks of the Atlantic 10 Conference Championships, we finally have our automatic qualifiers and at-large teams set for the NCAA Tournament. On the women's side, it was only the automatic qualifier who made it, the Richmond Spiders. There were a lot of firsts for the Spiders this year. They won their first ever regular season championship with a 26-5 record. It's also their first tournament appearance since 2005 and first as a member of the A-10. The Spiders were given a 10 seed and match up against Duke in Columbus, Ohio at 2.30 p.m. on Friday. Richmond will hope to get revenge on the Blue Devils after losing by 30 down in Durham in November. On the men's side, two teams from the conference were selected. For the first time since 1977, the Duquesne Dukes are going dancing. They will be an 11 seed and take on the six-seeded BYU Cougars tomorrow at 11.40 a.m. The Dayton Flyers lost to Duquesne in the conference quarterfinals but made it to the field of 68 as an at-large candidate. They slot in as a seven seed and travel out west to Salt Lake City. A showdown with the University of Nevada Wolfpack is on tomorrow afternoon at 3.30. I could see the Duke's strong defensive unit giving the high-powered Cougars offense a run for its money in Omaha. As for Dayton, keep an eye on the altitude change. That might put them at risk for an upset against a well-conditioned Nevada squad. Don't worry, folks. The Ramblers' season is far from over. They made the NIT field and will play against a familiar foe in the first round, the Bradley Braves from the Missouri Valley Conference. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. tonight and will be broadcast on ESPN+. A lot can happen in these next few days, so I've only got three words for you. This is March.
William Bazone for Rambler Sports Locker. Thank you, William. Even though Loyola didn't make the tournament this year, I hope the teams representing the A-10 make it far. Me too. The A-10 quarterfinals matchup between Dayton and Duquesne was a great game, and I'm excited to see both teams play again. Everyone loves a good underdog story in the tournament. Teams in the past like Oral Roberts, Florida Atlantic, and our very own Loyola Ramblers have been unexpected contenders in the tournament. Nate Keough is here to tell us who the next Cinderella story will be in the tournament. You said it, Lucas. Everyone loves a good underdog. And if you want to tell your friends, I told you so, then listen up, because these are some teams to watch in the men's bracket. 11 seeds have done very well in recent tournaments, and this year's batch might be the best yet. All four 11 seeds this year are conference champions. The Duquesne Dukes, the New Mexico Lobos, the Oregon Ducks, and the NC State Wolfpack. I see Duquesne, New Mexico, and NC State all winning, but I like NC State the best. They've won five games in five days in the ACC tournament, including wins over Duke and North Carolina. They've proven they can beat anyone and are one of the scariest double-digit seeds in the tournament. Don't be surprised if DJ Burns leads the Wolf Pack to the Sweet 16 and beyond. The next underdog to watch is Samford. The Bulldogs are the nation's fifth highest scoring team at 86 points per game, and they shoot an impressive 39% from three. They'll face a Kansas team that hobbles into the tournament less than healthy. Hunter Dickinson and Kevin McCullough Jr. are both question marks for tomorrow night's matchup, and their absence has left the Jayhawks exposed. Samford has four players averaging double digits, plus their star player is named a chore, a chore? Come on, sometimes these stories just write themselves. Lastly, I want to talk about the Florida Gators. They suffered a tough loss at the hands of the Auburn Tigers in the SEC championship game, but outside of that, they've been red hot. They're a seven seed, and they have, they have a potential second round matchup with the two seed Marquette Golden Eagles. Tyler Kolek is expected to return for the tournament, but even so, Marquette has looked vulnerable as of late. I think the Gators have an easier path than most, and they're slated for a deep run. I have them in my Elite Eight. Those are all the underdogs we have time for, but I know there will be plenty more upsets that just defy all logic. If we've learned anything from predicting March Madness, it's that it's unpredictable. For Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Nate Keough. Back to you, Natalie. Thanks, Nate. Maybe one of the underdogs will be the winner of the tournament. Lucas will be joined by Nate Keough and William Bazone to discuss who they think will be the winner of this year's March Madness on the Ramble. Hey guys, and welcome to another edition of The Ramble. I'm your host, Lucas Kim, here with William Bazone and Nate Keough. Today's question is pretty simple. Who is most likely to win the Men's March Madness Tournament? William, let's kick it off with you. Who's in your Final Four? Well, Lucas, it's, it's great to be here talking college basketball. It's what I've been doing for about four months straight now. So um, I could be right, I could be wrong. I'm not trying to say that I'm, I'm an expert here, but um, out of the East region, I've got the Connecticut Huskies. Run, uh, the champions last year, could they run it back this year? I think it's very possible. Mm -hmm. Out of the West region, I've got Arizona. I really like them. They've got Caleb Love, the former North Carolina transfer. Um, they could meet each other in the Elite Eight. I think that's a game you might want to watch if Carolina makes it that far. Uh, out of the Midwest region, I've got Creighton, the Blue Jays. We got to see them play earlier in the season against Loyola. They've mm -hmm. got Ryan Kalkbrenner, Baylor Shireman, two really great players that I like watching. And I hate to do it. I don't like Duke, but for some reason, I think Duke is going to make it back to mm -hmm. the Final Four this year. They've, they've had a couple of, of runs end early, but I think personally they're due this year. Kyle Filipowski's a great player. A little dirty, but uh, just, just, a, just a great NBA talent in the making right there, and uh, that's my Final Four. Right on. Thank you for your Final Four. Let's hear Nate's, and then I'll come back to you to see who your win is. Absolutely. All right, well, I agree with you with the UConn Huskies. I honestly like them to repeat. I don't really see anyone that's quite on their level. I feel like they're in a tier of their own right now. Um, and then out of the West, um, I have Alabama. It's less so that I like Alabama, it's more that I like their path, mm -hmm. right? I think UNC is easily the weakest one seed. I think we could see them go down the first weekend. A one seed always does. I think they're the most likely to this year. Um, I really, I just think Alabama has the easiest path of any four seed to the final four. Um, then in the South, I like Houston. Um, mm -hmm. Last year, there were no top three seeds, I think I was, I believe. I think it was think four so, yeah. seeds and up. Yes. All the final four. So that's exactly why I like two 
one seeds to get back there, kind of even out the stat book a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then um, in the Midwest, I like Gonzaga. I kind of like them in a, a five seed role. Wow. Um, I feel like now that they have that kind of chip off their shoulder, so to speak, they're more, more of an underdog to come out of that region, certainly. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's kind of their path for me. They get either Kansas or Samford. I really don't believe in Kansas, as I said earlier in the show. Um, and then they get Purdue, who is like notorious for not getting it done in March. Um, if Purdue can even get to uh, the second weekend, um, we all know what happened last year. Um, so those are my picks. Right on. All right, and William, who do you th who's your winner? I'm with Nate on this one. I think UConn's going to win it. But your Final Four is interesting. you got Gonzaga, even after losing the West Coast Conference to St. Mary's. You, you really, do you really think they're going to go that far this year? Again, I, I kind of like them in a, a lower seed than the normal 1-2 we see them in. I feel mm -hmm. like teams like that are usually sneaky. We saw UNC as an 8 seed either last year or two years ago. I feel like when Blue Bloods like that get a seed outside of the top four, they usually perform. And again, it's for them and Bama. It's just more looking at their path. To play devil's advocate a little bit on the UConn, though, however, since we both agree on the championship, they easily have the hardest region, I think. Oh, absolutely. Drawing the Ar Auburn... Illinois, Iowa State, Big 12 champions, Big 10 champions, SEC champions, yep. along with them, the Big East champions. I don't really understand the seating on that one, to be completely honest with you guys. I don't know how Auburn's a four. If UConn can get out of their region, I think the final four will be a cakewalk for them. But Auburn and then either Illinois or Iowa State, that's going to be real real tough. They're definitely the best team out there, but they also have the hardest path. But what about UConn? You know, UConn obviously is a good team, but Iowa State, they didn't have a really great non-conference. Their strength of schedule is really what put them on that two line and not really considering for a one. Do you think that has a problem even even for like UConn, right? Like if they, if I, I have them face each other in the Elite Eight, do you really think Iowa State could make it out? I think Auburn's definitely more of a threat um, to UConn than Iowa State is. Um, again, the only reason I kind of see Iowa State in the Elite Eight like that um, is their potential um, Sweet 16 matchup mm -hmm. would be Illinois. I do like Illinois to get out of the first weekend, but kind of like Purdue, kind of like a lot of Big Ten teams, the Big Ten hasn't really been that trustworthy in years past, especially the past decade or so. Um, I just don't know if I tr fully trust Illinois to get to that point. Um, I have them in the second round facing a Duquesne team that I saw in Brooklyn that can shoot threes like it's nobody's business. Could and be I another think, like Loyola yeah. type upset that's where a lower seed mm -hmm. beats Illinois. Yeah, that's absolutely. Well, looks like it's going to be another entertaining year of the tournament. Thank you so much. And let me just read what my brother sent me. My brother Noah said, Marquette will win March Madness due to the fact that we have played top 25 teams all year. Our chemi team chemistry having best point guard in the nation, Tyler Kolek. Who's your champion, Lucas? We didn't even ask you. Yeah. Who's my champion? I gotta go with Marquette. My brother goes there, so why not? They're two <laughs> seats, so you never know. It's hard to argue with that reason. Really All right, is. well, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. I'll definitely be looking out to see if either of our Ramble guests predicted this year's winner correctly. I can't wait to watch the first round this Thursday. The first and second rounds are this weekend, and look out for your Ramblers in NIT action tonight. On that note, that wraps up this episode of Rambler Sports Locker. To stay up to date on all things Rambler Sports, be sure to follow us on X, TikTok, and Instagram at Loyola RSL, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From all of us here at Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Natalie King. And I'm Lucas Kim. We'll see you next week, and don't forget to turn off the lights.